Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Pastor Melissa here with Kingdom Life Church International with uh, Words of Life for this week. And today I just wanted to talk about some things that have really been on my heart um, with the recent, there's just all the recent events of um, the past, I guess, several months that have gone on. Of course, we had the Supreme Court decision um, yesterday and there's um, just a lot going on in the world. And I just wanted to kind of give us some framework to look at it and then to really um, look at our own hearts and how do we how do we walk through, how do we navigate this time that we're in. And so I wanna start in Isaiah chapter 14. I wanna talk about the fall of Lucifer. And so it's Isaiah 14, verse 12, and it says, um, How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you were cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, on the farthest sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. Now, if we take a minute and just think about that, is you know what is the the most high god what does god do well i mean god defines who we are god defines our value our significance our purpose he's the one who who you know we're made in his image and likeness um so we were made to be righteous and holy and pure as he is and so that's and what's with god and god teaches us what is right you know what is righteousness what is holiness what is purity and again he shows each one of us our value to him and what our purpose is here in life and who we were created to be and if we look at what satan wanted to do lucifer wanted to do is he wanted to exalt himself above the most high god so what did he want to do well he therefore to exalt himself above the most high god he wants to define who mankind is he wants to define man's kind, mankind's purpose their identity he wants to define what righteousness and holiness and truth is and so so what we see going on in the world right now is again you know the lord spoke to me a long time ago saying that everything is always a battle between light and dark. It's always a battle between truth and deception. And so what we're seeing right now is that there's people who are blinded. Paul talks about that. They have a veil over them. They're they're blinded by the God of this world, who is Satan, and they're being deceived. And so you know, if you think about it, every one of us has been in deception before we came to the Lord. And, and so they, they're just doing what they, the only thing they know to do. And, and, you know, to me, I think about it in that, you know, people in, innately, they want peace, they want acceptance, they want everyone to be loved and feel loved, and, and they don't want anybody to be rejected. And so when you don't know God, when you don't know the standards of God and who God is, and therefore who you are in God, you begin to create your own morality. And, and this is what Satan is doing, is he's bringing people to create their own morality, their own sense of right and wrong, humanism, psychology, false religions are just, you know, running rampant. And I, I mean, personally, I really lay that at the feet of the church because um, because religion is, you know, Satan is the author of religion, not God. God's not a religious God. He's a relationship. But because when you teach standards of behavior outside of identity, when you, when you don't teach people who they are in Christ, and therefore that's why they're called to behave righteously, that God has already made them righteous, and that's why they're called to live righteously. When you don't do that, and you just tell people to live righteous, but don't explain to them who they are as new creations, it creates this disparity that leaves people in frustration, and 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 they walk away from the truth because of that, and that's what religion has done. It has made people powerless, that they've left the Holy Spirit out, and, let, and, and created a powerless religion. Again, this was all Satan's plan. And therefore the church hasn't really taken her place in, in the world as Jesus, as Jesus has called us to. Um, so what we have now going on is um, what's explained in Isaiah chapter uh, five, verse 20. You know, um, Isaiah is speaking and he says, "'Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, "'who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter, 
Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. And this is exactly what we're seeing. It's mankind within the vacuum of knowing who they really are in God. The enemy has a, a, a playground to be able to bring people down a path that, again, God never even thought we would. You know, he talks in the Old Testament, he says, you know, I never ever considered the fact that you would actually offer your children to Molech. Like they, they, would, they were offering their children, the Is Israel children, the Israel people were offering their children on, on altars of fire to a, the, the God of Molech. And God was like, like that, that thought that you would do that never crossed my mind, that you would go to that evil. But that's all the plans of Satan. He hates mankind. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He is, he is, and if you look at what's going on right now, the division that he is bringing, the hatred he's bringing between people, and this is why it's so important for us to understand that what we're, we are not battling with people. The people are not our enemy. The, our enemy is Satan. That is our enemy. Because the bottom line is that, um, let me go to John chapter 3, because the bottom line is God so loved the world, John 3, 16, that God so loved the world. He loved this fallen place so much that he sent, he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It goes on, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And of course, saved means delivered out of darkness, delivered out of sin, delivered into the kingdom of light. And that's why Jesus came. And that's still his motivation. You know, we need to be careful. It says in, let me see, I have a couple of notes here, but in Romans 12, 21, um, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Um, so that that's the you know we we can't we can't try to overcome this evil you know with evil we need to overcome it with good you know it says in Deuteronomy uh, Hebrews and um, and Romans well, Hebrews and Romans is it, quoting Deuteronomy but basically saying vengeance is mine saith the Lord so the vengeance is not for us to take we are still called to walk in light. You know, it goes on to say here, he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their dear deeds were evil. This darkness is spiritual darkness, it's ignorance. Um, for everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. And so we are at a time right now where we need to be careful. You know, I, I think now more than ever, like we need to make sure that we are seeking the heart of God. We need to make sure more than ever that we are hearing him because we do not want to address what's going on here in the world right now in our flesh. We cannot do that. We cannot mis misrepresent God. We can't take matters into our own hands. Like I said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And Jesus was able to hang on a cross and say, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do, because he knew they were in darkness. And darkness hates light. And again, what are we fighting against? We're not fighting against people. We're fighting against the principalities and powers that these people have submitted themselves to. And like I said, every single one of us were there. You know, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8 says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light. Walk as children of light. And so we, right now, more than ever, need to make sure that we are sitting at the feet of Jesus and we are praying for those who, you know, Paul talks about heaping coals of, of, of the, to being good to people, right? To be kind to people, even when they're nasty to you because you're, you're heaping coals of fire on them. Like we cannot harden our hearts to the world. We must keep our hearts soft towards the Lord. You know, we must, like I had said in the teaching about the table of showbread, like we need to, this is a time where we must have God's heart. 
We must love what he loves, hate what he hates, mourn for what he mourns, jo have joy for what he's joyful about. Like this is, this, is, this is where it's so important that we put our own agendas aside, our own fleshly perspective of things, and really sit with the Lord and to gain his heart. You know, this coming Sunday, I'm going to talk about the, um, the table of incense and, um, and the Ark of Incense. And uh, it's so important for us to, to, this is going to be about intercession. And so we need to be interceding. Um, and I'm going to do a series on prayer coming up too. But this time is so important for us to know how to pray how to pray our our most powerful weapon right now is our prayer closet our most powerful weapon is sitting at the feet of jesus and getting his heart and praying his perfect will into situations so that the strongholds are broken and again i'm not saying we become passive we still need to be involved in government we still need to have um, organizations, charitable organizations out there that are doing the work of God. We need to be outside the four walls of the church. We need to be preaching the gospel because that is the only thing that is going to bring peace. That's the only thing that is going to bring victory is understanding the gospel of Jesus Christ. That in the gospel, there is no Gentile Jew. There is no black or white. There is, there, there's not even male or female. There's just, there is oneness with God. There is our identity in him, right? And Paul talks about that, that it's division is never of God. He brings unity. He brings peace. He brings people together. When you have the Lord in your life, your life becomes stronger and more unified. Your relationships will improve, you know, I mean, your godly relationships will improve. You might have division. I mean, you have, you know, mother will be against daughter-in-law and things like that. Like if you, if with non-believers, there'll be, there'll be that kind of friction, right? But again, we have to understand what is it? It's people who are deceived. We don't hate the people. We hate the deception that they're in. We hate the author of the deception that they're in. And we must represent Christ well during this time. I mean, and at all times, we need to be going out and praying for people, operating in the gifts of the Spirit, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, being able to um, to operate in in you know signs, wonders, miracles, heal, praying for people, seeing them healed. You know, people, if, if the church was doing its job, I believe people would be lined up to get into our church services because the power of God is moving so um, powerfully. And I believe that is coming. I believe that the church now um, is being called to its knees, called to pray, and called to really, um, we're being shaken to make sure that we're making the main thing the main thing. And so as we come, each one of us individually and corporately, continue to pursue God with everything we have, He is going to move powerfully. I believe revival is coming. I, I hear it all over the place from other leaders and the body of Christ. Revival is coming. And I believe the power of God is going to be manifest in this world in such a powerful way and God will God will come and he is going to show his power on behalf of mankind and we the church have the privilege of carrying that if we stay in sync with him if we continue to follow him if we um, you know don't be weary in well-doing and we remember that we're children of the light. We remember our identity. Remember we carry this treasure in earthen vessels and it and make it our um, our privilege to go out every day into the world and to represent him well. Let them see the kindness, the mercy. Let them see that we don't repay um, evil with evil, but we repay evil with good. That we love people, that we um, respect people, that we show them the mercy of God. You know, I think about someone like Hitler and, um, you know, certainly things like that can happen again and scarily there's things that are pointing to that type of thing happening again but what if what if one believer had gotten close enough to him and had a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom that could have broken into that man's heart and healed whatever brokenness was in him that caused him to do such heinous things Right? He had, I mean, he had given himself over to Satan for sure because you, nothing else would explain doing that, right? But there's something in him that did that. And what if, what if one believer 
had preached the gospel to him in the correct way? What if one person had told him what his value was and his worth to God? What if one person had demonstrated the compassion and mercy of God to him? What could it have broken his heart so that he could have turned his life around? You know, and this is true for, for the people that we see that are so deceived. You know, what, if we can just get close enough and represent God well enough, we can have the word to say to them that will break the deception and bring them to him. And this is our call. We are called to preach the gospel. We are called to encounter Christ, to know Christ and live Christ. We are called to preach the gospel, demonstrate the gospel and, and show people the light of Jesus Christ and, and the beauty of who he is. Not religion, but relationship and understanding that they were called for such a time as this for his purposes and he will give them significance. He will give them value. It doesn't come out of their, their value and significance doesn't come out of causing these type of division and, 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 and um, immorality and all that. That's they, they've taken that on as their significance and purpose. That is not it. Their significance and purpose is found in Christ. And it's a beautiful thing, and he can reveal that to them. But we need to make sure that we continue to see no man after the flesh, that we see them as God created them to be, and to walk in the light as he walks in the light, and to bring truth during these troubled times so that God can move powerfully and mightily on behalf of mankind and bring people to Christ. So let me just pray for you. I hope this helps in understanding what's going on right now. Um, it's just Satan trying to exalt himself again above God, but Jesus has conquered this, and we are children of God. So Lord, I just thank you so much for these precious people. Lord, Holy Spirit, I just speak, just continue to reveal truth to them. Jesus, reveal truth to them, and give them strength, and, um, and also, Lord, just give them the desire to just sit at your feet. And Lord, I speak greater revelation coming forward in, in their hearts so that they are moved with what you are moved with, Lord, and that they, they can follow the path that you have created for them, Lord, and that they don't move to the right or to the left, but it's a straight path following you into their destiny and purpose to bring your, your kingdom, to continue to extend your kingdom here on this earth. Because, Lord, that is our privilege and honor. We are here for such a time as this. So we love you, Lord, and we give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' name. So I hope this blessed you. I hope this helped you. I'd love to see your comments or email me or text me, um, but just love to stay in touch with you. Um, I love you all, and uh, we'll see you soon. God bless you.